My name is Alex Gross. I'm a painter. I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been painting for about 25 years. And uh, I studied at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, where I also taught for 11 years. A show like this evolves with each painting I do. Uh, and the theme starts to emerge as I develop the body of work. So I might do one painting that has uh, a cell phone in it or, or somebody uh, looking listless uh, and then do another painting maybe of somebody, you know, drinking a Slurpee with a skull in it. And then as I start to build up the pieces, themes that kind of run through everything start to emerge and it starts to influence the creation of the later work. I think some of the first paintings in this show are uh, the painting called Yesterday and they're hugging but the, the woman is not quite there. She's transparent, she's blue. That painting doesn't have anything to do with technology, it's all about the relationship between these two people and what exactly uh, she is. Is she a ghost? Is she a memory? Is she there and she's just blue? Is she from Avatar? Some of the older pieces like that one, also the, the piece called Translucence, uh, Katie. She's, that's another painting with a transparent uh, woman in it. It's quite straightforward. So I started with a few pieces um, about transparency and, and I think that was symbolic of people not being present for whatever reason because I do think in the world we are living today most of us are not present a lot of the time it's harder than ever to live in the present moment with all the distractions of daily life technology um, you know social media entertainment, whatever it is, it's very hard to just do one thing and not think about nine million other things. So I do think that that's present in all of all of these paintings, maybe some more than others. So Suspicion is a, this young woman and her boyfriend on a bed. Uh, yeah, in that scene, he, he, she, she's facing away from him, he's behind her. And she's got her phone on the bed as if she's just been using it and she's looking off into the distance wistfully as if thinking about something. Again, she's not, I don't think she's present. Her expression is meant to indicate her mind is elsewhere. And I think it feels like he was asleep next to her, but she can't see he's awake and he's looking at her. I'm trying to set up a scene where you can read into it what you like. Yeah, so people will ask me regularly, particularly at the openings, uh, what a particular painting means or what something symbolizes in the painting. And I, I don't like to answer those kind of questions for a few reasons, but the chief reason is uh, I want the viewer to bring their own interpretation of the piece. And uh, so often I'll ask them to tell me what they think the piece means. And it's great. I get all kinds of interesting stuff, usually in line with where my thinking was at, but often with some very interesting twists. People ask me, you know, why the, why the reptilian or what is this, what is this, what does the sheep symbolize? Uh, I've got one called Shopaholics too, and I've been asked by a few people why sheep and why snakes. And again, it's up to you. Interpret, you know, what do you think a sh sheep is symbolic of, and what do you think a, a, a serpent is symbolic of? <laughs> so yeah, it's it's harder for me to find good good young male models, um, but I definitely I like to paint men too. I do get asked why I paint mostly women, and it's. That's the only reason is, is uh, you know, all my friends that are guys are not worth painting. Yeah, so this piece is called Cock. 
which is, uh, means rooster, in case you didn't know. On this piece, uh, all the ladies uh, are actually uh, from a found photo of a Japanese pop group. I forgot their name. Uh, it was an ad for like a website. But um, my initial, uh, when I started this painting, their faces were going to be normal, just like the men. And uh, I found that it was distracting, and I also didn't like the reference I had. It wasn't really good enough to paint from. Uh, and same thing with uh, Kim Jong-il in the background. I had it painted him completely realistically. But since he's in the background, once they were pixelated, he was just jumping out when he wasn't pixelated. So I had to go back and pixelate him too. You know, there's definitely gender politics going on in the piece. But other than that, it's a good example of a piece where I think it's much more interesting to let people try and decide what they think it's about. Yeah, so the, this wall here it, uh, is full of uh, my cabinet card paintings. Cabinet cards are antique photos. They were super common back in the 1800s till about 1915. Um, and they're still very uh, common and affordable and easy to find on eBay. Um, so I've been painting on them for about seven years now and I published one book of these in 2012. And basically what I do is I transform them into characters from popular culture, usually from TV, film, and comics. Sometimes a, a, a real person. I did a David Bowie as Ziggy Stardust, kind of an homage to the late great Bowie. Um, and I also did the rock band Kiss right behind me. They're neither late nor great, but they're a fun image. Um, and the main goal when I do these is to let the original person's face show through as much as possible. Otherwise, what's the point of painting over their portrait? So yeah, I've got Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad in here. I've got the Netflix Daredevil uh, from that show. I've got some Kill Bill characters. Yeah, this one is from Kill Bill, and this is actually a Japanese cabinet card, so it's a little bit different proportions. Sometimes on the back they have writing, which will have the name of the character or the year, and hers says in Japanese that it's from 1904, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the biggest challenge, other than actually painting them, is first identifying what card is best for what character. So I'll, I'll make a list of character ideas, and then I have a big stack of cards, and trying to find the card that looks like the character is everything. Same thing with the Jared Leto Joker character from Suicide Squad. That's actually a lady. <laughs> uh, but you know, it had to be somebody with kind of the bug eyes um, that would work for that. It makes it more satisfying when I find a card that really works for a character and then I pull it off. This one's called Mirror After Tooker. And if you don't know George Tooker, who's one of my favorite artists, I recommend you look him up. So this piece is an homage to him. Compositionally, it's a straight, straight ripoff of the painting he did. It's just my interpretation of, uh, you know, the modern equivalent of holding a hand mirror and admiring yourself. It's now your phone, whether it's a selfie or seeing who liked your latest Instagram photo, you know. I like this image a lot because it's very uh, whimsical and uh, has kind of a fairy tale vibe to it. Um, but it's, while at the same time, it has a little dose of reality. It's just a pretty picture of she's just flying on a lion with balloons. It says nothing to me. But she's flying over her town, which has KFC and McDonald's and uh, Coca Cola, just like your town and my town, and every freaking town on the planet. My name is Alex Gross. 